All right, for this video, we are going to be discussing writing expressions from real world situations. So we're going to be taking problems that represent situations in the real world, and we're going to be taking those and making math expressions to model them. So let's take a look at one example. Here's example one. Steve mows lawns every weekend to make some extra money. Each weekend, he has to spend $8 on gas. He charges $10 for every lawn he mows. If Steve mows X lawns, write an expression for how much money Steve makes each weekend. So we want to look at this. We want to figure out after the end of a weekend, how much money is Steve going to have? So we go through here and we look at what we've got in the problem. We want to come up with what sort of math are we seeing. So the first sentence, that doesn't really tell us anything. Second sentence is telling us each weekend Steve has to spend $8 on gas for his lawnmower. So if he's spending $8, we've got to think, what does that mean in terms of math? Well, spending money, that's taking money away from Steve. So we're going to say that every weekend Steve is going to subtract $8 from the amount of money he has. All right, so that's, that's part of our expression there. If we go to our second sentence where it says he charges $10 for every lawn he mows. Okay, so let's think about that. It might help if we make this little chart where we say we're comparing the number of lawns and the amount of money Steve makes. So if it's $10 for every lawn he mows, if he mows one lawn, he makes $10. If he, makes, if he mows two lawns, he makes $20. Three gives him $30. Four gives him $40 and so on. We're told that Steve is mowing X number of lawns. So we've got to figure out, well, what does that mean exactly? How much money is Steve going to make if he mows X lawns? So if we go look at our chart, well, we've got 1 in 10, 2 in 20, 3 in 30, 4 in 40. What we're doing is we're multiplying the number of lawns by 10. 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 3 times 10 is 30, 4 times 10 is 40. So for X lawns, it's 10 times X. We don't have to know what that is to write the expression. We can just say, well, the amount of money that Steve makes is 10 X. And we know that however much money he's making, he's going to be taking $8 away. So say that Steve mows, for example, five lawns. Well, to figure out how much money Steve made that weekend, we're going to say, all right, we've got $10 times five lawns minus the $8 he has to spend on gas. 10 times 5 gives us 50, and 50 minus 8 tells us that Steve's going to make $42. So this right here, this expression models this situation right here. All right, so let's take a look at another example. Here's example two. It says, Maria is going back to school shopping. She buys some shirts that cost $25 each, some pants that cost $50 each, and one pair of shoes that costs $65. We want to write an expression for the total amount of money that Maria makes. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video, write this problem down, and see if you can come up with an expression for this before I continue on. All right, now that you've given it a try, let's go and take a look at this. We're saying that Maria buys some shirts, and she buys some pants. That sum is telling us we don't know exactly how many shirts she's going to buy, and we don't know how many pants she's going to buy. So, we've got an unknown amount, and for that we need to use some variables. So our first step should be to define those variables because they didn't tell us what they should be. So for shirts, I'm going to say I'm going to use S. All right. So for the number of shirts that Maria buys, I'm going to use S. For the number of pants that Maria buys, I'm just going to use P. All right. Now you can use whatever variables you want. For me, shirts S, P, pants P, it just makes sense. So now we have to think how much money she's spending on those. Well, it says she's spending $25 on each shirt. All right. So if we think back to our last example where we said, you know, we could say this is shirts and this is money. One shirt is $25. Two shirts is 50, you know, three is 75, and so on. So we think of the fact that if we have S shirts, we're saying 25 times S will tell us how much money it costs. So let's represent the number of shirts, or the cost of the 
shirts with 25s. But that same idea with pants, we know that those are $50 each, so we can call that 50p. And she's only buying one pair of shoes that cost $65, so we don't need a variable for that. We can just say that is 65. So we're trying to write an expression here for the total amount of money that Maria is spending. This word total, you should remember, is telling us that we're going to be doing some addition. So to write the expression, all we have to do is we go and we say 25s plus 50p plus 65. This expression right here models our paragraph that we've got up here. So for example, we said that Maria buys two shirts, three pairs of pants. Then we can plug those variables or those values in for these variables and figure out how much money she spends. We can say that's 25 times 2 plus 50 times 3 plus 65. 25 times 2 we know is 50. 50 times 3 is 150. And 65 is just 65. Add all these up, 50 and 150 gives me 200, and 65 tells me that Maria is spending $265. So we can use this expression here to model this paragraph. All right, so let's try a third and final example. So here is example number three. Jose is seven years younger than two-thirds of his dad's age. If Jose's dad is D years old, Write an expression that can be used to determine how old Jose is. If Jose's dad is 30 years old, how old is Jose? So take a second, pause the video, and try this one on your own. All right, now that you've tried it, let's go ahead with this problem. We actually have two things we have to do here. We have to write an expression, and we have to figure out how old is Jose. So we already know that our variable that we're going to use has been defined for us. D is Jose's dad's age. And we want to use that to figure out how old Jose is. So up here, this sentence is going to tell us everything we know. Jose is seven years younger than two-thirds of his dad's age. So let's look at this part first. Two-thirds of his dad's age. Two-thirds, that's a fraction. Two-thirds. And of, if we think about this, this, if you look back to the table you made for different terms for math expressions, we know that of is telling us multiplication. And it's two-thirds of his dad's age, which we know is D, so we can say this is two-thirds times D. And then we're saying that Jose is seven years younger than that. Well, if we're going younger, that means we want to be going down in age, so I'm going to say that that means we are subtracting seven. All right, so this expression here is going to tell us exactly how old Jose is. It's two-thirds times his dad's age minus seven. All right, so that answers our first question. Second question says, if Jose's dad is 30 years old, how old is Jose? So this is telling us D equals 30. So we just plug that into this expression to figure it out. We say two-thirds times 30 minus seven. 2 thirds times 30, well that's 2 times 30 is 60, divided by 3 gives me 20. And then I take away 7 to figure out that Jose is 13 years old. So, we used this expression here to model our problem, and then we plugged in the replacement value of 30 to figure out how old Jose is. So I'm going to leave you with your try it problem for tonight. You need to write this problem down, do it in your notes, and bring it and your notes with you to class tomorrow.